foundation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next, we'd like to introduce the committee members uh, and our staff. We start down on the other end with Don Sweeten. from the Department of City Development. Mike Vandersteen, Mayor of City of Sheboygan and Chairman. Janet Gilbin with City Development. Terry Jones, Vice Chairman, City of Sheboygan. Thank you very much. Next, uh, does anyone have any potential conflict of interest with the items on our agenda today? Seeing none, then we'll move on to the minutes. Uh, looking for a motion to approve the Planning Commission minutes from our last meeting on September 10th. So moved. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes, approving the minutes from September 10th. Next is items for discussion and possible action. Item 3.1 is a conditional use and variance application by the Kiefer Starlight to install an interior lit projecting sign for Wigwan Willen Mills at 3402 Crocker Avenue. All right, Steve. All right, um, Tyler Neubauer is here as well as Randy Miller from Wigwam. And what we're taking a look at is this is a sign that Wigwam has already installed at their site. Um, one of the things that they were hoping for is if you take a look at the site plan, it's a pro uh, 11, 11 square foot projecting sign. And what they're asking for is for the sign itself to be, have the ability to be interior lit. Um, a lot of times with our projecting signs, we don't allow for interior lit projecting signs. And in this particular item, what you can see is, as many people may or may not know, Wigwam has um, created a retail component at their facility. And that retail section is located at the west end of their property. And there's some concerns with the uh, customers coming in there compared to the wigwam traffic in terms of their truck traffic and things of that nature. When you look at the site plan, um, you can see that the sign is approximately about 400 feet from Crocker Avenue. So that was one of the reasons why uh, wigwam was taking a look at wanting to light that sign so that they could direct people specifically to that new retail area. I don't know if many people were going there on Thursdays and visiting their, uh, uh, buying socks and going to a different uh, entrance, but they've created that retail space on the west side and basically what they wanna do is make sure people can adequately find it. So staff is recommending approval of the interior light projecting sign and the applicants are here. Thank you for that report, Steve. Would the applicants uh, like to respond to anything or add anything to that report? Please come up to the podium. Yeah, my name is Tyler Neubauer. On behalf of Wigwam Mills, I'm with Kiefer Starlight Signs. And uh, just to pretty much, I think Steve did a pretty good job of explaining exactly that. Uh, really, we're looking to direct traffic once they're actually on the lot already to get to the entrance, being that it's a newer entrance and a newer concept, having the retail area in Wigwam Mills at this building. Um, there's not really much visibility of that west end of the building at all. You have maybe about 150 feet or so on the actual street where you can physically see it at all. And when it's dark, there's being as also a black sign, it's you know, dang near impossible to see. So safety hazard. Um, right there also, as you can see actually in the renderings, um, you can see there's actually freight entrances right around the signage. So it's just a bit of a safety concern, making sure we get the potential customers directed to the actual correct entrance on the building um, and a bit of a hardship obviously for the client as well as far as being able to make their sales to make sure they get the clients to the correct entrance so just a little bit more background on that for you guys. Thank you very much Tyler. Uh, commissioners do you have any questions of Tyler? Okay, Alderperson Bourne. 
Thank you, Mayor. I was just going to make a motion to approve subject to conditions. Thank you for that motion. Is there support? Thank you, Jerry. Uh, further, any further discussion? Uh, next is Marilyn Montemayor. Thank you, and I'm glad you have to sign because it was hard to find you the first time. Thank you. All right, next is David Hoffman. So if you're driving into one of the other two entrances to the parking lot, is there any additional signage to direct you to the west side of the building? Oh. Not really. So there, there's one directional sign as you come into the property um, that says entrance Wigwam Mills. I don't think it's so specific, you know, it's not so much specifying that the drawings in front of me. Let me check to make sure. But um, so we do have one that's not illuminated um, again. During the daytime, not a problem. It can get you into the lot. But once you're at the lot, because the entrance, it is, you know, where it is in the west side of the building, even that, once you're in the lot, you still have no idea where you're going to go to get to the retail spot, correct? So although there is a directional sign to get you there, it gets you about halfway there. And then the rest is, you know, getting to the actual spot, which is right over the entrance door, is this said sign that we're here talking about today. So just to clarify. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Anyone else uh, on this? Any neighbors? Okay, if you'd like to <laughs> take the lecture, step up to the lectern. Now, this is on this issue, correct? Yes. <laughs> I agree with Marilyn. I had a terrible time finding it as it is. GPS, and I almost went home. So I'm really glad that if this sign goes up, it'll be easier to find. Thank you for those comments. Uh, I entertain a motion. We have one on the floor, excuse me. And um, seeing no more discussion, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, everyone. Good luck with your, your project. We're happy to see this new business on a regular basis rather than once a month. Item 3.2 is a conditional use and variance application by Work It, Own It, uh, by LLC to operate the first floor uh, real estate office and the second floor office or apartment at 2516 Calumet Drive. Steve? All right, thanks, Mayor. Um, we have uh, Bob Sexton, Nick Kane, and Kathy Kane that are here. And uh, um, I'm sure many people uh, have seen these individuals before, whether it's Kane Auctions or the real estate company. Um, what they're taking a look at is this is at 2516 Calumet Drive, and this used to be Mary Angelie's wedding shop. Um, the um, Kanes and are, are taking a look at this to operate Avenue Real Estate, and they could probably speak to you a little bit more about Avenue Real Estate, but basically it's uh, working with people on residential, commercial, investment, real estate, working with their buyers and sellers from around the area, and conducting uh, real estate auctions for their auction business. Um, it's my understanding that there hasn't been a, a great city presence and this a city of Sheboygan presence and that this office building which is presently vacant will give them that opportunity to to have a city presence um, a lot of their work obviously is out at their sites but as people are doing the different real estate or investment property discussions this gives them an office in the city to have those discussions to take place so that that use you know they could have uh, is something that they could just move into this spot and operate but there's also the opportunity for them to potentially use the second floor <coughs> space as far as a second tenant whether that would be a commercial tenant or potentially an apartment so um, basically what they want to do the previous user of that I believe at one time it may have been an apartment and then the wedding shop used it for uh, uh, storage and things like that so this would give um, work it, own it, the opportunity to work in addition to their first floor office space, the opportunity to potentially work with another tenant or an apartment uh, person that'd be interested in, in a residential unit. So staff was recommending approval of the proposal subject to the conditions you have before you. And I can't any questions the applicants are here. I don't know if there's any neighbors for this one, Mayor. Thank you very much, Steve. The applicant want to make any comments uh, to add on to Steve's report?
of Avenue Real Estate there again. Certainly appreciate the opportunity to be here with in front of all of you here today and appreciate the great summary there, Steve. Okay. I guess just from, from our opinion there and things, it's a great opportunity as stewards of the of the county here and members of the Sheboygan, Plymouth, and Elkhart Chambers. Just um, want to be instrumental pieces to the community here and find a great opportunity to find a bigger place and opportunity to, to help those residents of Sheboygan. Uh, Jim. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, yeah, I think this is going to be a very good location for your for your real estate office, but I did have a couple questions on the building as far as accessibility. And the front of the building, you got those three steps that come up uh, from the sidewalk, and there's, I, I'm just wondering if, I, I have a couple suggestions, but do you have any uh, ideas about making the building a little more accessible. My first concern would be the steps in front that come right off the sidewalk. Those three steps there do not have a, a railing, and for some individuals it would be hard to make those steps. And I see the front porch has railings. That shouldn't be a problem. And then I'm wondering in the back of the building, it looks like that's the, the back door is that grade, so I guess that would make it easier for people if, if you're gonna have that back door open for customers, that might help people with get in. My question is, once you walk in the back door, is the office right there or would there be additional two or three steps to go up to get to the office? Sure, great question there, Jim, too, and that was one thing that we did consider in the, in the rear of the building there and things to make sure that we can soon thereafter potentially make it very handicap accessible there and then once the grade is met, into the back of the property, there's a hallway that is on that same parallel there until the office space coming through the building. Thank you. Thank you for that information. I guess I'd uh, be looking for a motion on this. Move to approve the staff recommendation. Thank you, Marilyn. David? Thank you very much. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. One last call for any discussion. Uh, Steve, anything? Yeah. Uh, one one last item I forgot to um, address was the uh, signage that they were proposing. Um, if you take a look in your packets or on um, uh, uh, screens, there uh, Mary Angeles previously had a pylon sign, and what the applicant is looking to do is to uh, enclose the post of that pylon sign, box that up, and then. Uh, put on a new, uh, obviously, cabinet for, for their use, and uh, staff did not have an objection to that, so staff or just wanted to make sure the plan commission was aware that this sign was a part of their proposal in terms of what they're asking approval for as well. Thank you very much, Steve. So with that, uh, the condition of use and variance application is before us, uh, including the sign. Uh, is there any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? No. And chair votes aye. The motion will pass. Thank you very much. Uh, good luck with your project. Next is uh, item 3.3, .3, a conditional use application by Jeremiah and Nicole Reynolds to operate Escape Sheboygan at 1133 uh, Indiana Avenue. Steve? Um, Jeremiah and Gus Reynolds are here today this evening. Um, I believe there's uh, neighbors here for this one as well, Mayor. So the plan commission may recall that in the fall of 2017, Jeremiah had come in for Escape uh, Sheboygan off of Geely Avenue. Um, at that time, he was leasing that facility. Was uh, uh, their, their plan was to operate the business and assess the direction that they would go, see if they would have some success with it, which they have had. Uh, and based on that success, uh, the Reynolds have started to look at other properties, and what we're taking a look at is the 1133 Indiana Avenue property. This was the former mixed retail facility. 
This building has been vacant for five to 10 years, potentially. It's been too long. Um, anyways, uh, Jeremiah had the opportunity to take a look at this and believe that this facility would fit well for the uh, amusement facility that he's looking to create. Um, part of it would be the creation of the four to five escape rooms, which he did on Geely Avenue. Um, in addition to that, this building also allows him to create on the second floor uh, the ability to have uh, a 4,000 square foot ax throwing bar. So I'll probably let uh, Jeremiah speak to that a little bit more in terms of what that is. But um, uh, uh, staff had taken a look at this and, and again, the, the facility has been vacant for a number of years. Indiana Avenue obviously is one of our key uh, uh, corridors that we're looking for reinvestment in. There's an opportunity here. A um, couple things just to mention. Uh, there is the discussion about taking a, a look at serving beer and wine. So that's a possibility in addition to this. So you just have to obtain the uh, required licenses to do that. And then the only other question that we've spoken about is a little bit on the um, west side of the building. There's quite a bit of uh, former glass block windows that have been covered with um, uh, plywood and, and painted black. So uh, one of the conditions that staff is talking about is working with the applicant. I know the applicant was interested in yes and had the opportunity to see what's exactly behind there to see if it's the glass block. He's interested in trying to get something done on there. So one of the things is there is a condition that talks about that and, and uh, to hopefully uh, if there's the glass block windows to bring those back out. So staff was recommending approval of the uh, project that you have before you, the applicants here, and then there is a neighbor here for this one as well. Thank you very much, Steve. Uh, Jeremiah, Jeremiah, would you like to make any additions to uh, Steve's uh, report? Please step to the podium. Uh, my name is Jeremiah Reynolds. I currently own uh, Escape Sheboygan on 1130 Geely Avenue. Uh, as Mr. Sokolowski said, um, I actually remember some of the faces here who approved us <laughs> back in 2017. Thanks for that. Uh, we decided to open the, the shop on Geely Avenue uh, knowing that it was probably too small if it was successful, but it was uh, uh, a responsible wading into the water versus um, an investment the size that I'm looking at doing now. Uh, since we opened one year and four days ago, uh, thousands of people from Sheboygan County and hundreds of people from uh, various corporate um, groups that have come into one of the various uh, resorts uh, have enjoyed our uh, services. Um, and the expansion that we're uh, asking for is a significant uh, investment in the Indiana Avenue corridor is going to present an opportunity for us to have more games available to players because at this point the business model for two games is a little tight um, and the unique layout of the building uh, really presents a great opportunity for the axe throwing bar. Uh, I, I'm happy to answer any questions about escape rooms but I know that uh, uh, many of you are already familiar with those because we've got one. Um, axe throwing bars are similar in nature to bowling alleys in the sense that people come there for a specific purpose, they do that specific purpose, and then they leave. Um, the, the component that has a bar won't be as big as any of the bars that you know, we have seen in, in our bowling alleys that we've had on the north and south sides of Sheboygan. Um, a small correction for uh, Mr. Sokolowski, we will be applying for a beer permit, not a, the, not a wine permit, um, and certainly not a, a liquor permit. Um, our expected hours of operation are going to be Thursday through Sunday, uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, closing by 10. Um, my goal is not to operate a full-fledged bar. My goal is to have an entertainment venue for people to go to uh, and then close down, uh, much like restaurant hours. Um, I think that is a pretty good explanation. If there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them. I understand we've got uh, some people from the neighborhood. Uh, I'd love to hear their thoughts and answer any questions that anybody may have. Thank you very much, Jeremiah. Commissioners, any discussion? Uh, Jerry? Uh, thank you, Mayor. A couple of questions for you. There at the location we're looking at, what are, do you have any concerns about parking? How many, I guess, attendees would you have in the building at one time? Right, so I've been talking to um, Mr. Eirich in building inspection uh, about occupancy. Uh, 
and because the building is so large, uh, it can seem like it would be full of hundreds of people. Um, but in order to uh, acquire the, um, the occupancy, uh, they have agreed to do stated occupancy. So we're gonna have two separate sections of the building um, for, fi for fire code and life safety. Uh, so the axe throwing bar is gonna have a stated occupancy of 99, although full capacity for axe throwing is probably gonna be around 85. Um, and then downstairs, we're looking at a total capacity of like 20 people, um, just because there are gonna be three games and there's always a group leaving, there's always a group leaving, there's always a group coming. Um, hopefully there's always a group coming. <laughs> but um, the, that was a concern. Uh, 12th Street offers uh, some parking, Indiana Avenue uh, offers a lot of parking, uh, and it's gonna be kind of similar to the other buildings on Indiana Avenue that don't have their own dedicated lots. There we go. Uh, with regards to the corporate events, I noticed you have limited hours. When would you be hosting any of the corporate com the company events that are coming in? I've been to the axe throwing in Milwaukee. I'd say overwhelmingly it's 80% is a company brings in their employees for interaction. Mm. So that's normally a Monday through Friday operation. You're open Thursday through Sunday. How will that affect you? Yeah, right. So uh, the, the, the corporate events have always been by appointment. Um, and they, all, they almost always go outside of stated hours. Um, I've always kind of said, I'm, I'm ready to open up shop when, when you're interested in coming. And I would say uh, of those corporate events are typically between the hours of two o'clock in the afternoon and six o'clock at night. Um, because usually they have dinner plans and they want, <laughs> they want to get out of my location so that they can go somewhere and eat. Um, sometimes people will bring their own food in, but that's not as common. Um, that's not as common. Uh, but the short answer to your question is I schedule a lot of my corporate events during my non-stated hours. My stated hours are for what I consider leisure guests or people who are booking for entertainment purposes. I should also like to add that I have had one request uh, in uh, a, a year for a third shift operation, and it has not panned out. So in, in a year of hunt fielding dozens and hundreds of requests, I've never done anything for a corporate group after, and you guys were probably my latest, probably like 8.30. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Okay, seeing none, I'd accept a motion on this. Okay, we have a, mo a motion and a second down at the far end. Um, any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Chair votes aye, opposed? How come I don't have anything to say? Well, we just asked for people to, to speak. I'm sorry, I didn't see you. I didn't even get a chance to get up here. Please come up to the lectern. Listen to someone throwing axes. I got enough trouble with rushes. They make plenty of noise. They got their employees there all night long working on their private cars in the garage. I had to go there last night over to Robert, uh, Dave Oldenburg's place and complain about the noise and the spray painting that he does in the middle of the night. Well, I'm going to have to put up with this too. I have a house that has eight windows in front and the house the house is, it's a sitting room in front. I, I don't want to look at parked cars. I don't want a dumpster like in previous times behind, on the side of me, eight feet from my bedroom windows. I'm so upset about this, I can't even talk. I, I, I mean, how would you feel? I got all these businesses. I've got to the east, Honold and LePage. I got rushes, then I got this kind of a noisy business where I'm sure teenagers will be coming to, and then alcohol on top of it. And when they had their um, estate sales down there, people would park, come and go, come and go, empty out their ashtrays. They would break CDs, throw CDs, and the cars would run over them, and it'd be tons of little, tiny little pieces that I had to pick up, garbage on, thrown in my bushes, 
And did people from the estate seals, they were running them, clean up? No, I had to. It's, it's bad enough, I gotta clean up twice a week where I live because people are tossing things out the windows all the time. And I don't think it's fair to me to be enclosed by all these businesses. I've got the laundromat, I've got the uh, Hispanic grocery store down there, and there's just parking, people parking all over. There, it's even a dangerous situation with the uh, Hispanic grocery store. There was a person killed last year making a turn in there. Just t complete total traffic there. It's, you know, I don't think it's fair to me. I'm out of Sheboygan if this happens to me. I've had enough. And ma'am, could I get your name, please? Jane Weber. Okay, Jane, thank you very much for your comments. Okay, we'll uh, take another. First of all, we'll offer Jeremy a chance to respond. Um, may, may I address the neighbor? I know I'm supposed to talk to the committee, but I, if, if with your permission. She's on her way out. Oh, fair enough. Um, uh, addressing the, the concerns, I have an alley house and pick up trash behind my, uh, behind my location, or behind where I live all the time. I can truly appreciate that. But what I can say about myself is this will be the second operation within the city limits that I have operated. Uh, this will be the third business within the county that I have operated. Uh, my family used to own and operate Libby's House Senior Assisted Living Facility in Plymouth. Uh, we still own the one in Calumet County. And through our careers, we have not been nothing but responsible stewards of our location, responsible stewards of our property. Uh, and I am from Sheboygan. I want nothing more than to add more to Sheboygan. Um, and should my neighbors uh, approach me with uh, concerns, I'm happy to address them uh, as they come. Um, with regards to the other neighbors making noise late at night, my goal is to be out of there by 10 o'clock every night because <laughs> I've, got, I've got kids and a family to support. Um, Steve and I have worked uh, diligently and I've worked very hard with the uh, building inspector department to make sure I'm doing everything by the book. I, I never want to redo anything uh, and I never want to be in the city's bad graces. So uh, if you have any follow-up questions with any of the uh, neighbor's concerns, I'm happy to field any of your questions. Thank you, Jeremiah. Okay, is there any other discussion? Then we'll re-vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to a conditional use and variance application for Altmeyer Electric to construct a new off-site parking lot adjacent to their facility at 827 South 21st Street, parcel 59281293700. Steve. Thanks, Mayor. Um, Dennis Altmeyer is here from Altmeyer Electric and Joe Bernowski from JB Site Design. So what we're taking a look at is a property that's at 813 South 21st Street. This is um, just to the south of New Jersey Avenue by the Department of Public Works, kind of in the Wildwood uh, softball area and in, in that area. Um, Altmeyer has been there for many years and there was a home at 813 South 21st Street that was in pretty rough shape to say if kindly. Um, and uh, they elected to purchase that property because they were in need of some additional storage. Um, since that time, they've purchased the price and demol uh, demolished the single family home in order to provide for some additional space for their vehicles that they're utilizing at their different um, uh, job sites. Um, one of the uh, issues is, is that um, it takes a little bit of time to uh, gravel that area and then they're looking to have that paved. Um, another one of the issues, if we, if we could get the one that's the um, overhead photo, the aerial, yeah. Um, Altmeyer. Does the arrow show up on there? I don't know, Chad, if you could just show where Altmeyer is, which is right uh, there. And then could you point this alley out? So there's an alley and that uh, right between Altmeyer and that there's the single family home is right there that they're looking at the parking lot. And so one of the things that they would like to do is they want to pave that uh, uh, single family lot for their parking lot 
but they also want to have the opportunity to speak to the city about that alley and whether or not there would be the consider of vacation of that alley since they would own both sides of it. And what they would like to do with that is instead of, say, for example, just simply paving the parking lot, if there's an ability to work with the city, if we would be consider vacating it, they may have the ability then to own that and pave that all instead of paving up to a gravel alley and then having a gravel alley. And, and so that's one of the things they're hoping for. But if, they, if we can't do that, what they're looking at is just paving that parking lot. It's about 3,000 square feet. There will be a 10-foot um, buffer on the north side, which is the side that faces the existing dwelling. Um, other than that, uh, staff was recommending that uh, they would be allowed a date of July 10th of 2020 to actually pave the parking lot so that there's an ability to have that uh, parking lot settle this year and for them to have the time to see if they can vacate it. And this would uh, allow them the ability to pave that parking lot at that time. So staff is recommending approval of the proposal uh, subject to the conditions. I can answer any questions. The applicants are here. I don't know if there's any neighbors here for this one. Thank you very much, Steve. Is there any discussion or questions on this one? Uh, Ryan Sazma? Yes, yeah, probably a question for Joe. With the vacation of the alley, did you ever look at this? Is there any utilities in there at all or anything like that? So that'll make things easier so that discussion. Could you please step to the podium, sir? I'll go up to the podium. Hi, I'm Dennis Altmaier. I do believe that the neighbor, I don't know the address, but the neighbor that has the property mm -hmm. that also uses the alley, that's his only access to his parking area. So I don't believe he would be for vacating the alley. I believe he would want that maintained so that he has access to his, his, his uh, property. Uh, what we wouldn't mind doing is you know, either would the city pave the alley if we paved the parking lot, or would we be allowed to pave the alley with our parking lot and, and still maintain it for access for the other tenant? Yeah, I think the paving of the alley, if you want to do it, that's something we can definitely work out. So other, other, other alley people are. Yes, I don't know that, that anybody, the, the neighbor would probably not be a, for right. vacating the alley. Right. So yeah, just mm -hmm. just work with public works. We can we can work that out. Right. Okay. Dave, did you have a question? Yeah, that was another question. Okay. All right. Seeing as there's no other discussion, is there any neighbors here on this one? All right. I'd entertain a motion. Thank you for that motion and support. Uh, one last call for any discussion. Jerry? Uh, Steve, did we need to include in our motion your date of July 10, 2020 for completion, or is that just a suggestion? Thanks, Jerry. Um, I think that was one thing that allowed us just to have the conversation with regards to the vacation. Um, I think I think it would be good to maintain that in there uh, as a condition of approval. If they would, if we find out if they would want to pave it earlier, they certainly can do that. But if there's the option that hey, all of a sudden we discuss the vacation and that goes into winter of the year before we find out. But, you know, obviously paving season is not happening at that point in time. So that was the reason why staff had put that date. Okay. Thank you. So then we're uh, including the date in the motion. Is that correct? Our motioners? Okay. Very good. And, uh, and we're not dealing with the alley vacation. That'll be something separate from this if anything happens in that area. Okay. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Item 3.5, uh, Van Horn Real Estate is proposing a minor building and site plan amendment to the previously approved conditional use and variance application to construct the Kingsbury Village apartments on the vacant undeveloped parcel located at the southwest corner of Wisconsin Avenue and North 10th Street, uh, the former Kingsbury Brewery property. Steve? All right. 
Chris Merklin is here from Van Horn, Steve Pesky of uh, Distinctive Design, and Joe Bernowski from JB Site Design, and I believe there are neighbors here for this one. Um, as the plan commission is aware, we had uh, approved this on August 13th of 2019. Um, the applicants will probably be able to speak to this a little bit better than I can, but what they're here for today is to take a look at some minor uh, adjustments to the mechanical room. Um, uh, basically, what has taken place is they're relocating the mechanical room on building three, which is the building along North 10th Street. The mechanical room was previously on the north side of that building, and now you can see on the highlighted section, it's on the south side of the building. Um, they're adding a mechanical room on building one, which is the Riverside, and it's the south side of the Riverside building. And then there is no change to the mechanical building that was on building two, which remains at the intersection of 10th and Wisconsin. So the site plan is basically staying virtually the same as what everyone looked at previously. It's just uh, those modifications in terms of the relocation of those mechanical rooms. So that's the extent of this. Staff was recommending approval subject to the conditions that you had previously approved. And the applicants are here and there's neighbors here as well on this one. Thank you very much, Steve. Chris, would you like to add anything to that presentation? Please step to the podium. Uh, thank you. Um, no, I really don't have much to add other than that uh, for architectural and for uh, underground utility reasons. Uh, we, we deemed it a good decision to move uh, those mechanical rooms to, to where they're shown on the new plans. Yeah. Thank you very much, Chris. Is there any discussion, commissioners? Seeing none, I'd entertain a motion. And a second? second. Very good. The motion's on the floor. Are there any uh, neighbors here that have any comments on this? Seeing none then. Oh, please come to the podium. Uh, just give us your name, please. I'm Kay Jelenic. I live at 1022 Wisconsin, just down below here. Thank you. And I'm just a curious person, and I want to continue to know what's going on. So that's it. All right, thank you. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Chair votes aye, opposed? Motion passes. Item 3.6 is a conditional units and variance application by Green Street Development Group, LLC, to construct the Oscar apartment complex at 1436 South 15th Street, the Vandervart property. Turn it over to Steve for some comments. All right, uh, Joel <coughs> Oliver is here from Green Street Development Corporation. Um, I don't know if Joel has any other individuals here. There are a uh, number of neighbors here that are interested in this particular project as well. So you guys are all gonna have to bear with me. Um, so Green Street has been, this is the, we're talking about the Vandevart property. Um, obviously Vandevart is in, still in operations. This is a uh, 200 and approximately 250 unit apartment development project. Um, basically what they're taking a look at is uh, the concept the concept is to restrict the asking of rents on a majority of the units. Um, this would uh, include more units, uh, one bedroom, than they would typical market rate, or I'm sorry, uh, the proposed rents would be 990 to 1600, and the value of the project is approximately $45 million. Um, Green Street's greatest strength is redeveloping challenging projects and shows this one because it has the potential for a project with enough scale to truly improve the surrounding area. The site is currently utilized by Vandervart Concrete Products. There's an office building, showroom building, two warehouses, garage building, outdoor storage, and significant areas for staging and crushing of contract, uh, concrete. Vandervart is in the process of constructing a new facility and Green Street will enter into a short-term lease with Vandervart, which will allow the continued use of several portions of the site during 2021. 
Uh, this will facilitate the migration to their new facility and allow Green Street to begin construction of the Oscar. Again, this is a multi-family portion of the development consists of 248 apartments constructed in four standalone buildings consisting of 180 unit building and 356 unit buildings. Each building will be approximately four stories with a maximum ridge height of 49 feet. There would be a total of 458 parking spaces. There would be nine freestanding garages with 200 spaces, 53 carports, and a balance is 205 surface spots. North, uh, South 15th and South 16th currently connected into the site would remain in place and will connect to a main drive through the site, which will also connect and be re relocated curb cut on Broadway Avenue. The new entrance, uh, the new main entrance off of Broadway will be through, you can see there's a, a, a separate parcel that's to be created. It's possible that there could be a quick trip or other potential commercial use of that property at the South east corner of the site referred to as lot b um, we are not there's nothing under consideration this evening for any type of project on that parcel um, green street has commissioned a traffic study um, which will be completed by october 1st uh, the, the site's prime location presents a unique and exciting opportunity allowing the redevelopment of this vacant and underutilized parcel into market, into uh, housing opportunities. Um, I'll let the developer talk a little bit in terms of some of the uses of the different buildings as far as some of the buildings that they plan on maintaining uh, that Vanderbark has on the site for amenities. Um, so again, there'd be 128 unit, uh, one bedroom units, 112 two bedroom units, and eight three bedroom units. Um, the ingress, like we talked about, is at 15th and 16th and Broadway. There's the potential for a commercial development at the southeast corner. Uh, Plan Commission should be aware that this development will require a developer's agreement and um, that that uh, agreement needs to be finalized. Um, applicant will have to create the parcels as proposed, which you see the lot B as well as the lot A for the development parcel. Um, applicant indicates there could be commercial use of that lot B property down in the future. Um, again, North 15th and 16th and Broadway avenues are the, going to be the main uh, streets that you will be utilized to access the site. Um, the site is well buffered on both Broadway Avenue as well as uh, 17th Street um, uh, and the applicant plans on maintaining a lot of those mature trees that are uh, that align both of those uh, streets to provide the buffer to the development as well as the neighboring properties. Um, there are a couple of variances that are being requested. One is to have 17 units per acre. Uh, one is to have a zero foot paving setback and that is where that cross easement would be with lot B for that shared access onto Broadway Avenue and requesting some landscaping and buffer yard require, um, uh, variants. So staff is recommending approval of the project as you have proposed with the conditions. Um, I can answer any questions. The applicant is here to address uh, the development and there are neighbors here for this project as well. Thank you very much, Steve. Uh, commissioners, any questions? Uh, Alderperson Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, when this came before the Plan Commission the last time, uh, probably I've been more excited about this project than many that have come before us, particularly that we're going to be doing something with that corner, which in my opinion has been an eyesore, and I understand it's, it's a business, but it's an eyesore. Uh, the only concern I really have with this is the possibility of the quick trip going in on that corner. Uh, I'm concerned that it may take away from the ambience of the project. Uh, it looks like the exterior of the buildings are going to be beautiful and the east and west uh, buffers are going to be there. But I really question with the traffic that that's going to generate with a quick trip. And I know we're not actually talking about a quick trip, but we're, there's a possibility of a quick trip. With the amount of traffic that's going to be generated just by the tenants uh, with, with that many apartments, uh, I'm just concerned about a quick trip going in that location. Uh, I just think it may ra raise havoc with that intersection. Another positive point that I want to make uh, before the principals comment on this is I'm 
very happy to see the price points of these apartments. I think it really fills a needed niche in Sheboygan. Uh, some of our other beautiful apartment buildings that have taken place over the last couple of years uh, are considerably more expensive than these. And I think this is gonna be uh, just really gonna fill a niche for us. So maybe if you could comment maybe on the potential commercial development down there and the concerns I have with it. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Joe, would you like to come to the podium and um, add on to that and respond to those comments? Absolutely, thank you all for having me tonight. Really appreciate it. Uh, it's been great working with the city through this uh, process. Uh, to your point, we actually got invited uh, last month to speak at a conference in Oakland about this project. Uh, as far as the rents go, we've been working with uh, some partners who are nationally trying to figure out how do you really address this kind of gap in, in housing. I mean, I think people are familiar with tax credit projects uh, like the Badger uh, Street Apartments that are going in, which is a great, a great project. But we've been trying to figure out how do you provide this where the rents are, are a little more attainable um, to fill that gap because we're seeing the same thing, you know, rents being very high. So we're happy to be able to do it. Um, this is not an income restricted property, so I want to point that out, that um, unlike a tax credit project where you can only have to make under a certain amount to live there, that's not what this is. We've just committed to depress the rents to keep them a little lower so that people that are working in the wonderful industry in Sheboygan you know, can afford to live here. So that's really our goal. Otherwise, it'll be indistinguishable from the, the new market rate product being built here, which is gorgeous. I look at projects all over the country, and I can really tell you guys should be proud of what developers are building here. Um, so on the quick trip front, um, as Steve mentioned, we have commissioned a traffic study. They um, actually took all the counts last week, so they're compiling all of the reports now. Uh, our intention very much would be to obviously not build something that's gonna have negative impacts. So we would work with the city and staff to mitigate any concerns that came back. Um, an interesting thing to point out about that site is, if anybody remembers, that used to be a 10-foot bluff in the middle of the site, uh, running east to west, and that's been filled in about three phases over the last 30 years. Uh, the corner that you're talking about was never filled, so that's actually lower at the original grade. So a future commercial use on the corner would actually be built at the grade that the corner is at, which is about 10 feet lower than the site behind it. So part of the intention there is that when you're at the intersection, you'll see whatever commercial use is there, but you'll also see the multifamily above it so that there's less interaction there to kind of create that buffer between the two, which has very much been part of our plan. Uh, we've also discussed with staff, um, you know, working together to include some design criteria in our agreement with a potential user like QuickTrip so that there's um, consistency with what we're both, both saying. So. Um, we're still working with them. We've been having ongoing conversations with three different potential users that are very different. Uh, quick trips the furthest along, but there are different potential ones. That's why we didn't go too far into it tonight. So hopefully that addresses that. Um, we do have the three different roads. We're leaving the two existing streets open to the north. Our intention is very much that the new south entrance will be the main front door to the site. As far as signage goes, um, that's where we would intend to direct our tenants to, to that new curb cut on, on Broadway. So while we are keeping um, the other two open, 15th and 16th, we intend to, for those to be lesser used kind of back door, uh, if you will, because we're not trying to put cars through the neighborhood. We're very sensitive to that. Um, also, in the previous conversations we had had with a couple of neighbors, the one resounding theme was sensitivity to keeping the uh, berm and the mature growth trees on the west side of the property that are there. And as you can see from that site plan there, they're by and large untouched. There's a little bit of dip in at the one point for the new green space that we'd add. But otherwise, we've gone to great lengths to not touch that buffer, to not touch the mature growth trees. Quite frankly, it's very expensive to build <coughs> trees and berms like that. And if it's naturally there, I will take that gift. So uh, our intention would be to leave that uh, and also on the east, the buffer um, with, with business would be our intention. Thank so you that, very much for explaining okay. your visions for this project. Next, I'd like to see if there's any uh, neighbors who would like to uh, give us any comments. <coughs> Sir, please step up. And just your name and address, please, before you start. South 17th Street. And uh, we've been there for 29 years and we've enjoyed Vandervart uh, that refers to themselves as a good neighbor. 
We've had correspondence over the years that they've sent to everyone along the alley and on the other side explaining, you know, certain things that have taken place. And so we've appreciated them. And I appreciate everything that Mr. Oliver has explained and uh, the sensitivity to that green space with the mature trees is very, very significant to everyone that I have talked to over the years along the alley from uh, Dan Hine at uh, Northland Plastics to Dave Adamovich at Automation Technologies at the south end of the alley. So I just want to reaffirm and confirm our uh, hope and wishes as neighbors to work with, uh, uh, encourage Mr. Oliver and, and everyone who's involved in this to really treasure that, that green space and those mature trees. And if it would be possible to have that colored uh, picture up on the screen again, um, if you'll notice, those of us who know the alley, and uh, especially to the lower right, you'll see automation uh, technologies there with the white buildings. And uh, the berm looks pretty much uh, untouched except for that lower right, uh, just to the, the, the left of the parking lot at Automation Technologies, right there. That corner of the, it looks like a street that goes around the building or the driveway, that, that seems to be getting closer. Uh, Mr. Oliver, do you know what the uh, distance is between the corner of that drive space to the alley? That's the shortest distance in the, uh, uh, in the green space that I see up there. You know what that would be? I can't tell you the exact measurement based on this drawing. Um, what I would say, though, is the landscaping plan is something we still have to submit to the city, which would address any new buffering that would replace anything that were encroached on there. Uh, everything between that, yeah, so that would yeah, be my best answer. I don't want to tell you a wrong number and okay. put my okay. foot in my mouth. Yeah. Mr. Oliver actually came to my house last year, and I was gone. <laughs> he came in the back and looked at everything, and he express his appreciation for the green space that we do have and, and uh, their sensitivity to that. So I'd just like to thank you for, for that sensitivity and uh, I hope and pray that this all works out uh, in a very positive way for all of us as neighbors. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Uh, the gentleman in the back row, row there, did you want to speak? You had your arm up before? Your name and address, please. Name is Robert Ziller, uh, 1529 South 17th Street. And that would be to the west edge. And um, again, that was a great part. And uh, appreciate the attention you have on that mature uh, green area. That is very important for everyone, I would have to say. And um, I counted four stories, I believe. Four story. And uh, that's going to put that pretty much right up to the top of your people to the alley in the west side. So, yeah, it takes a long time to get trees that high. So that's an important issue, and I just wanted to express that. And uh, thank you for hearing me. Thank you very much, sir. Anyone else like to speak? Ma'am, please step up. My name is Linda Smith. I live at 1415 South 16th. I have a little bit of a concern. Will there be absolutely enough parking for all those people? Because we have the plastic factory there right across from our house, and a lot of times there's no parking on our street. And uh, so I'm just concerned. They, I, they, say they, have another, they say they have another parking lot on the other side, but that's only a couple by their warehouse. So can you tell us that there's going to be enough parking, even though we've got all those plastic people? Or are we going to still have fun with, fun with parking? OK. Go ahead, Joe. Go ahead, Joe. Uh, what I can tell you, based on our experience as um, developers and our architects and engineers and our property management firms, 
this is informed by what we see as, as being appropriate. The worst thing for me is to have apartments where people can't live, because people know that, and that's, that's bad. Um, and we have the room to do it here. We've actually worked really closely with the city uh, on the balance of what we're providing in garages versus just parking lots versus carports, which have had a lot of funny carport conversations since I've been here, um, since nobody has them. What we're proposing is cool, I promise. Um, so yes, we believe that what we're providing is appropriate and, and we'll, we'll satisfy it. That would definitely be our, our intention. Thank you very much. Uh, Chad, you wanna go next? And there's a gentleman back there. I'm sorry. I'm Tony Blake. I live at 1511 South 17th Street. Yes. I think it's a great plan. My only concern is the lighting. Are you gonna be using like super bright lighting? Is it gonna be something low key? Will it shine over the tree line? Sure. So um, just for clarity for people that don't know, so when you're looking at that picture, Chad, would you mind kind of in the bottom left, the, the four buildings down? So those are all single story garages, or what those are and what those are. So the multifamily buildings are the, those in the middle of the site, uh, just for context for everybody height wise. The garages are just kind of standard single story garages. Um, what is currently shown um, on uh, the plan would be uh, wall mounted lighting for the garages that are really very focused on the park drives in front of them. And what would really impact um, all of those neighbors would be what are on those garage buildings. Part of what we'll have to submit to the city is a photometric plan that shows that there's no, no light pollution over the property line. Um, anything that'd be higher, as you can see, is very more centralized in the middle, kind of street lighting. Thank you, Joe. Any other comments from the residents? Okay, then. Uh, move on to uh, Ryan Sazma. Yeah, just so the commission knows, developers are gonna be required to do a very detailed traffic analysis. And if there's gonna be any kind of pinch points for entering or exiting the site, the uh, study will pick up on that and we'll just have to address them. But um, I'm pretty, he has enough parking here for the development that it, it shouldn't be an issue, but the traffic study is gonna pick up on it. So in our, right. in our department will review that. Thank you for those comments. Next, Jim Bourne. <clears throat> Thanks, Mayor. I just had a question on, uh, people at you know people my age are starting to sell their homes and move into apartments or condos and one concern I always get from my friends and constituents is uh, and, and with all the developments you've done I'm sure you're on top of this but can you kind of explain what you do in your developments as far as making the apartments as soundproof as possible you know with adjoining walls up and down and that type of thing so yeah, soundproofing actually is driven by a couple of different things, mostly external factors, obviously. So uh, there is a sound engineer that's involved with it and you know, kind of assesses all of this from an exterior perspective. Um, and from the exterior, we can deal with it with the window systems um, and with the exterior installation. Uh, on the inside of the, of the building, you're really dealing with um, you know, the drywall systems that you're using, how high they go inside the walls, how you insulate, um, how the flooring systems are built and how the roof <coughs> systems are built. So um, we are designing this uh, project to, it's the US Green Building Council Green Standard, um, which drives a lot of those things with what kind of insulation you use and how you achieve those more efficient buildings. Um, so that, that is very much uh, from a, a green standpoint of building an efficient building is our intention and a great byproduct of that is usually increased soundproofing. So. Seven. Okay. Next is our planning director, Chad Pelichek. So I just wanna state that we've got a little bit of work to do for the commission on a development incentive for this project. The plan is for the city to create another TIF district um, around this property to help with some incentives to fill a gap. Um, we're in the middle of negotiations as it relates to that. Originally, we had thought that this item might be held, although now we're recommending you guys move forward and take a, action on it, and we'll continue to work through those discussions, but there's gonna be some follow-up to the Common Council before this project actually moves forward. Uh, Joel's group at Green Street had originally applied for uh, funding through LIHTC credits through WIDA, were not given those credits and then came up with a creative solution through some HUD financing. So there's a number of steps that need to be put in place before you're gonna see ground being moved out there 
Um, so we're probably looking at something early next year, or late next, middle to late next year where they'll start construction. The other thing I wanted to mention is um, it's the city's intent. We've got a purchase and sale agreement to purchase right away from Union Pacific Railroad to extend a recreational trail from uh, basically Pennsylvania Avenue down to Union and then along Indiana Avenue corridor and that would go right by the east side of this property. So between the Vander Vart or the Oscar property and South Business Drive is a railroad corridor that will ultimately become a recreational trail. Um, as part of their plans, they've looked at attaching or connecting their development to the trail as a non-motorized amenity, amenity surrounding their development with some um, shelters and playgrounds and those types of things connected in. So I think they've done a very good job on putting together a plan that uh, ties it into existing infrastructure as it relates to the trail. And the, as Ryan said, there could be some additional impacts on traffic that needs to be dealt with, but we're planned to move forward and figure those out as well. Thank you. Under further discussion, Jerry? I'd make a motion to approve subject to staff recommendations. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any other discussion? Please come up to the podium, sir. And just your name and address. My name is Scott Kanoki. Address uh, that I'm is 1104 Wisconsin Avenue. Uh, that is the uh, Sheboygan Trade and Labor Hall Association. One thing that I just mentioned and I wasn't aware of that you're talking about a TIF district here. Um, interesting if we're gonna go down that avenue I think the city has, has a responsibility for the citizens in this city uh, that they should have something, there should be an incentive then that they should use local contractors to build this uh, instead of having out of town contractors. Um, certainly if the citizens here, if their tax money is good enough to help out as far as a tax incentive, then they should be good enough to build it as well. So I represent the Sheet Metal Workers Local 18, the four county area, roughly 250 members. Just wanted to say my piece on that. Once again, if you're using tax money, you should insist on having local contractors, this area, build this stuff. I've seen a lot of developments go up around here. Some have been good, some have not been good. I've seen some substandard contractors working on these buildings. So just wanted to bring that forward to your attention, sir. Thank you very much. Joe, would you like to respond to your contractor situation? I have the best answer. We developed and built the sheet metal union hall in St. Louis. We're actually notaries to all the unions in St. Louis. Um, we have two construction companies ourselves in St. Louis. Neither of them are building this. Uh, we buy wholeheartedly into working with people locally. Um, you know, local tradespeople know the market, know what's going on. Um, we also have a huge incentive in this and in that we're buying the site from somebody in the trades uh, who's well dialed in. So uh, we, we do that the best we can. We can't guarantee we use you know, everybody because it's driven by the market a little bit, but that's definitely at the forefront of our mind to make an effort to do that. So. I'd appreciate your comment for sure. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for that response. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you very much for the discussion on this. Our next plan meeting is October 15th. And the next item on the agenda is adjournment. Jerry? Is there a second? second? Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We stand adjourned. Thank you for your time tonight.